गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग सम ऑफ द स्पेशल प्रॉब्लम दैट आर फ्रिक्वेंटली इनकाउंटर्ड इन गैस वेल्स सो दिस इज अवर लास्ट लेक्चर ऑफ अवर करिकुलम एंड लेट्स स्टार्ट विद दिस नाउ यू सी इन प्रैक्टिस देर आर सम प्रॉब्लम्स इन नेचुरल गैस प्रोडक्शन ऑपरेशन दैट नीड टू बी पेड स्पेशल अटेंशन number one problem that is frequently occurred in gas wells is the liquid loading so liquid loading of gas production well that reduces the deliverability of the gas well and second we have blockage of the pipelines with gas hydrates so these are the gas hydrates which block pipelines equipment and is another problem that reduces the pipeline efficiency and affects normal operation of gas processing facilities now this cleaning pipelines during operation presents a challenging task for engineer in gas production operation so therefore these problems can be tackled very carefully so let's start with the liquid loading problem first so you see liquid loading in a gas well is a kind of inability of the produced gas to lift the produced liquid from the well bore under these conditions the produced liquid will accumulate in the well bore leading to reduced production and shortening of the time till the well no longer produces if the gas velocity drops below critical velocity required to carry liquid to the surface the liquid start accumulating in the down hole of vertical well or it may accumulate in lateral section of horizontal well or it may accumulate even in hydraulic fracturing so here we have in this slide we have shown some of the steps that are taking place during formation of liquid loading we can say so what happens is that initially high pressure gas well produce gas carrying liquid water or condensate in the form of mist now in gas well particularly this kind of flow is very very much important so mist flow will carry along with it the liquid particle and therefore will not allow the liquid to settle down now as the gas velocity reduces or drops due to reservoir pressure depletion the carrying capacity of gas decreases now when the gas velocity drops to a critical level or we can say critical velocity the liquid begins to accumulate in the well and the well can flow under annular flow regime followed by slug flow regime so we have seen these various regimes in vertical multiphase flow through the pipeline right so these are the typical flow regime which occur when the pressure of the well reduces right so first it's a mist flow then annular flow then slug flow and then finally we have bubble flow right so the accumulation of liquid that is called also called liquid loading increases bottom hole pressure that reduces the gas production rate right so as soon as more and more liquid will accumulate finally the stage will come then the whole production will cease or we may say that the well ceases to produce so low gas production rate will cause the gas velocity to drop further and eventually the well will undergo bubbly flow regime and then cease produ producing right so this is the whole process that occurs during liquid loading of well and it is always important to find out what should be the minimum flow rate at which the well should be flown so that this kind of liquid loading problem may not occur right so uh, let's move on from this slide and you see that there are in us there are number of gas wells which have been drilled as you see that over the period of time from 1990 to 2015 the number of gas well has been increased right and uh, by some estimate it has been found that 70 to 80% of the gas well are low rate and below 300000 standard cubic feet per day therefore perhaps 4 lakh to 5 lakh gas well are at risk of low or no production from liquid loading unless artificial lift is properly applied so on the right i have shown you again some figure where the initially the gas has the high velocity then it reaches the medium medium velocity and then finally it reaches the low gas velocity and the liquid has been accumulated and gas will no longer able to carry the liquid along with it
so this is called liquid loading now here i have shown you one of the video link which you can see the visualize what is happening inside the well over a period of time and when the flow of the gas is reduces right let's move on to diagnostic of this problem so as far as diagnostic is concerned liquid loading is not always obvious and recognizing the liquid problem is not an easy task a thorough diagnostic analysis of well data need to be performed now there are certain symptoms which need to be looked so as to verify that yes liquid loading or liquid slug has been formed in the inside the well so there are certain diagnostic things which need to be seen which will allow us to understand the formation of liquid slug inside the well bore first is the increasing difference between the tubing and casing pressure with time right so difference between tubing and casing pressure if increases this is one of the symptoms then second there is sharp change in gradient on the flowing pressure survey right so if there is sharp change in gradient of the pressure that means there is a formation of liquid loading and finally when there is a sharp drop in production decline curve and prediction with analytical method are also adopted to find out the symptoms which are actually causing the liquid loading to happen in the well now accurate prediction of such problem is vitally important for taking timely measure to solve such problem now there have been many investigator who have suggested different methods although since we have a multi phase flow in the pipelines the result of this method often so many discrepancies and this method are not easy to use due to difficulty with predictions of bottom hole pressure in multi phase flow so most of the recognized method which is given by turner hubbard and deckler in 1969 there are other researchers who have given different methods uh, based on the kinetic energy of the liquid uh, gaseous particle uh, however the turner method given in 1969 is mostly uh, adopted in the industry so as i said that different models such as droplet film or transient multi flow models are used in unconventional gas reservoir to predict liquid loading now this turner 1969 and other researchers like coleman 1991 are commonly used in oil and gas industry now first we'll discuss the turner method which is still bit related to separation that is taking place in a vertical separator as we have seen so uh, we'll discuss more about it as we go around different models given by turner method so this turner hubbard and deckler in 1969 analyzed and predicted the minimum gas flow rate capable of removing liquid from the gas producing well they presented two mathematical model to describe the liquid low problem one model was flim movement model and second is entrainment drop movement model on the basis of analysis of field data they concluded that film movement model does not predict liquid transport mechanism accurately therefore they particularly relied on uh, entrainment drop movement model so let us discuss what is this entrainment drop movement model now this turner entrainment drop movement model can say that it is derived on the basis of terminal free settling velocity so such velocity we have also seen while designing the separator we have seen that at what is the critical velocity of the gas at which the separation should occur right below which separation should occur so similar uh, consideration has been done here where the settling velocity of liquid is derived in this way as shown in the diagram in the right side where you see that there is a gas velocity there is a drag force which is on the upward direction and there is a gravity force which is in downward direction so when these two forces balances we have a velocity called terminal velocity so vsl we can see that in this particular equation this vsl is the terminal velocity and has been derived from understanding the fact that this drag force is equivalent to the gravity force and when these two forces are equalizes we have a settling velocity and this settling velocity is found using this relationship now according to turner in 1969 gas will continuously remove liquid from the well until its velocity drops to terminal velocity right so similar the case the liquid gas separated from the gas which is going upward in a vertical separator similar things is happening here that the gas is carrying along with it the fluid or liquid towards upward direction and the liquid is not settling back now you see uh, the gas velocity has to drop below a certain limit 
so that it get reduces or it get less than the terminal velocity right so once the velocity of gas which is on upward direction becomes less than the terminal velocity the liquid is start accumulating inside the well so this is the logic which has been used in derivation of this turner entrainment drop model and you see in the next slide that the minimum gas flow rate that can be calculated by equation shown here that is the minimum flow rate or minimum required gas flow for liquid removal is given by this equation where you see the p is the depth of the interest right so p is the pressure at the depth of the interest a equal to cross sectional area of the conduit t equal to temperature in rankine z is the compressibility factor right so this is the equation which can be utilized to find out the minimum gas flow rate so that liquid will go along with gas will not settle down so this is the minimum flow rate now this turnal et al 1969 found that this entrainment drop movement model underestimate the minimum gas flow rate so whatever value we are calculating is little bit underestimated so the derived value was adjusted approximately 20% upward to ensure the removal of the drop right so suppose x amount of minimum required gas flow rate has been calculated using this model so we have just increased the value by 20% so that the error can be minimized now you say see that the main problem that hinders the application of turner entrainment drop model to gas well comes from the difficulty of estimating the values of gas density and pressure so the pressure because being multi phase flow it's difficult to determine at the bottom hole and therefore this is very critical in uh, understanding or hindering the application of this model however by adjusting certain factors we can cope up such difficulties now this model has been done for uh, gas gravity of 0.6 and gas temperature of 120 degree fahrenheit so this is also one of the limitations of this model now see the same model has been written in different forms you see turner 1969 proposed a relationship which is a elaboration of our previous discussion we see that we have a equation where we have different parameters like bottom hole pressure uh, rw is the well bore radius sigma g is the surface tension between the fluid and then you have rho g rho l gas compressibility factor at the reservoir pressure so these are the different variables on which the qm or minimum flow rate which is allowed to carry the liquid along with it depends on different parameters and if there is a case where this uh, surface tension is not known then the q minimum can be calculated using these two relationship for gas water system and gas condensate system so let us do one problem which able to find out the minimum or critical gas flow rate used for carrying the liquid along with the gas so this question is, is to estimate the minimum gas rate required to eliminate condensate liquid loading given the following well data right there is a gas which is flowing along the well bore and there is a formation of condensate or we want to remove that condensate to get formed and therefore we want to avoid such liquid loading so that gas will flow continuously along the well bore so the problem says that the bottom hole flowing pressure pwf is equal to 1000 tubing internal radius rw equal to 1.22 inches liquid density rho l equal to 35 pound per feet cube gas specific gravity equal to 0.67 surface tension between gas and liquid equal to 49 per centimeter and this bottom hole temperature is 560 degree rankine so this is our problem now in this problem we have to first find out the gas compressibility factor which can be calculated by pressure and temperature so this pressure and temperature can be used to find out the pseudo reduced pressure and pseudo reduced temperature as we have seen in step 2 so for calculate pseudo reduced pressure and pseudo reduced temperature we have to know the value of critical pressure and critical temperature which can be known by the gas properties or can be calculated using uh, some of the empirical relationships as in step 1 now the step 3 shows that we have calculated the gas deviation factor by empirical relationship however it can also be calculated from the uh, gas deliverability chart 
now this z is found to be 0 0.757 so therefore using this z we can calculate the density of the gas real gas equation now here you can see that once you have the value of density you can find out the critical gas flow rate using the equation given by turner 1969 so this q gas minimum can be calculated using this equation and it's found to be 1540,000 uh, standard cube feet per day. So this is should be the minimum flow rate of the well, uh, gas well so that the liquid will not uh, accumulate inside the well. Okay, so let's move on to the solution of such kind of liquid loading problem. So in case when you have a liquid loading inside the well, it has been accumulated and the gas flow rate has been gone to zero or a minimum flow rate. So in that case, what you should do to avoid such kind of loading problem, liquid loading problem. So the number one thing which has been suggested and is widely used in the industries also is the foaming of liquid water, right? In case you have a gas water system, so you foam the liquid water can enable the gas to lift water from the well. So in that case, the density of the water reduces and it will not allow the excess pressure in the reservoir and the gas pressure which is coming from the bottom hole will allow the liquid to carry over to the surface okay so this is one of the thing which has been done in the industry so on the right i have shown you the multi camps foam assisted lift adopted by halliburton where they formulated a composition of foam which is mixed with the water so that the density of water reduces and can be lifted above the water so the formulation is not known but this is the technology which is being used by Halliburton now using a smaller tubing or creating a lower well head pressure sometimes can keep the mist flow longer right so sometimes we use a smaller tubings so that we can create lower well head pressure sometimes and will allow the liquid gas to move at the faster rate due to pressure differential and the liquid load gas well can be unloaded by gas lifting or pumping the liquid out from the well bore. So these are the different techniques which are being used or sometimes we may also heat the well bore which can prevent the condensation which will not allow the liquid to form. So these are the some, some methods which can be adopted in the industry to uh, cope up with the liquid loading problem. Now next problem which is frequently encountered in gas well because gas carries always some water along with it so uh, we cannot remove 100 percent of the water however we can minimize the amount of water content in the gas stream so the hydrate sometimes is unavoidable and we have to take some measure to control such phenomena to occur now these hydrates are nothing but these are the solid crystalline compound formed by the chemical combination of natural gas and water under specific pressure and temperature conditions and the temperature are considerably above the freezing point of water right so it will not form at 0 degree centigrade but forms above 0 degree centigrade right so these are highly undesirable things in the pipeline and these are responsible for operating difficulties in wellhead and pipeline and different processing equipments once these are deposited now this is not only methane which forms the hydrate but there are different gases which also forms hydrate so you can see that methane hydrates has a chemical composition although this is not a chemical composition uh, because this is a kind of physical process which is taking place between methane and water but once the hydrate is formed we have to represent this in form that methane takes around six moles of water along with it to form out the methane hydrate similarly ethane hydrate needs 8 mole of water molecules propane hydrate needs 18 moles of water and co2 needs 7 moles of water so co2 is also along with um, the gases present or the gases flowing through pipelines so these are also equally responsible for forming the hydrate so the co2 content must be minimum because CO2 and H2S also forms hydrate at considerably lower pressure and temperature, right? So um, the stability of CO2 hydrate is more as compared to methane hydrate. Therefore, the uh, CO2 hydrate avoidance is also critical and we always, always want that CO2 must not be in a gas uh, flowing system. Okay, so uh, next is during the flow of natural gas is become 
necessary to define and avoid the condition that promote the formation of hydrate. Hydrate may choke the flow string, surface lines and other equipments resulting lower flow rate of gas. Now let's see what are the conditions which tends to promote the formation of natural gas hydrate. It is as I said it is always the presence of liquid water, it is always the presence of uh, low temperature, high pressure, not only temperature and pressure, if there is a agitation or a velocity or turbulence present in the system, this also initiate or this also increases the process of formation of hydrate, right? So this will allow the faster nucleation of hydrate. So if suppose hydrate is tending to form at 16 hour in a uh, stable condition, now it will form at uh, one hour only in case of agitation. So this is the effect of agitation which, which is very critical and need to be taken care of. Now it is also the presence of seed crystal of hydrate. So suppose there is some seed of hydrate which has formed and it will allow the faster nucleation to happen. Now we also see that presence of H2S and CO2 are also critical and we should also always minimize CO2 and H2S in the system or in the pipeline so that these gases may not form the hydrate right so let's move on to different hydrate forming conditions as we have said that uh, there are different pressure temperature agitations and different uh, other modes which are uh, responsible to promote the hydrate formation so uh, broadly we have described various parameter but if we go little deeper we see that hydrate formation conditions also depend on the composition of natural gas right so if you have different specific gravities of natural gas it means the composition of the natural gas is also varying so suppose if you have a hydrate system with lower amount of specific gravity right so uh, if you have a methane gas carrying different impurities and the if you have a methane which is pure right so pure methane has a gravity of 0.57 around or 0.6 so you say that uh, in this particular figure we have a pressure and temperature so if you have known the temperature of the system you see that the gas will form at higher pressure at the same temperature so let's say if you have 60 Fahrenheit temperature so a gas with lower gravity will form the hydrate at higher pressure. Similarly, the gas with a lower gravity will form the hydrate at lower pressure, right? So it is always the composition of natural gas which defines the hydrate forming conditions, right? Not only pressure and temperature, it is also the composition of natural gas, right? So here you can see that we have different critical pressure and temperature values for hydrate forming conditions. So this is for methane. So this is these are the pressure value in PSIs and this is the temperature. So at 30 degree, 32 degree Fahrenheit almost 0 degree centigrade the gas hydrate will form at 381 PSI. So in this way these are the listed things for critical pressure and temperature values for hydrate forming conditions. Okay. Now uh, Kurz in 1945 given a rigorous, rigorous techniques for predicting conditions for hydrate formation and the calculation are analogous to dew point calculation for multi component mixture. He suggested that it is convenient to divide hydrate formation in two categories. Number one categories is that a decrease in temperature with no sudden pressure drop okay so hydrate may form at a condition where you have a sudden decrease in temperature or a decrease in temperature but there is no sudden pressure drop so in that case we can use chart which is defined above to find out the value of pressure at a given temperature right and suppose you have the sudden expansion that is taking place so sudden expansion will also allow the gas hydrate to form right and this sudden expansion uh, if this is taking place we can use this chart shown here which is defined in a category b and this chart is available for various specific gravity of gases for 0 0.6 0 0.7 point up to 0.9 or 1 so we have two different charts which can be used to find out phase equilibrium conditions for the gas hydrate to form right now 
as you say the expansion may occur in uh, orifice the back pressure regulator or chokes so these are the areas where the risk of the hydrate formations are higher right so actually the sudden expansion causes the temperature to decrease now as the temperature decreases the uh, the hydrate formation becomes unavoidable in certain cases okay so let's move on and let's discuss one of the problem of interest allow us to identify or use these charts right now you see that uh, the question says that a gas of specific gravity 0.7 is at a pressure of 1000 psi now assuming the presence of free water the number one question which is being asked to what extent can the temperature be lowered without hydrate formation right and the gas of 0.7 gravity is given and the pressure of 1000 psi which is given so you can see that if it is a methane gas or uh, or a gas with a gravity of 0.7 so you can see that the pressure initially is 1000 psi in this chart so we have to go to a chart which shows the gas gravity of 0.7 so let's say this is the chart so this is the temperature is around 65 degree fahrenheit so the gas hydrate will form below 65 degree fahrenheit but will not form above 6500 degree centigrade right so the temperature should not be lowered below 65 degree fahrenheit so that hydrate will not form in second question which is being asked again the gas gravity 0.7 will remain same and the initial pressure of 1000 will remain same so next question will which is asked is how far can the gas be expanded without hydrate formation if the initial gas temperature is 80 fahrenheit okay so you have to select this chart which is for expansion and category b so you can see that initial pressure is 1000 right so first you have to locate this 1000 psi first and then the there are different curves which have which are uh, given for different temperatures so you can see that you have a temperature of 80 fahrenheit okay so let's see where this 1000 is cutting your 80 fahrenheit so you see that it is uh, cutting this 80 fahrenheit curve at this point okay at this point around okay mm, okay this point around so this is something around 650 something right so how far gas can be expanded so gas can be expanded up to 650 psi right so that the hydrate will not form if you are expanding the gas below 650 then the gas hydrate will form right so you have to take care using this graph that pressure should not go below 650 psi so that hydrate will form right uh, will not form now next case is how far can the gas be expanded without hard hydrate formation if the initial gas temperature is 100 fahrenheit so you see that again the initial pressure is 1000 and it is not cutting anywhere this 100 uh, Fahrenheit line okay so in this case the gas can be expanded to atmospheric pressure also right without hydrate formation so these are the applicability of this graph to understand in uh, real uh, problems or once you are in field you don't have the always the time to do certain experiment to find out when the hydrate will form or when the hydrate will not form so these charts are very useful in certain cases where your expansion is occurring and where your decrease in pressure or temperature is occurring to find out when the formation condition is occurring or not okay so this is the good example of utilizing such graphs now next case come is how we can prevent the hydrate formation you see that uh, since the hydrate forms in different uh, units of the pipeline and various utilities so this is always desirable to uh, use some method to prevent the hydrate formation so most of the commonly used method which is used in the industry is to use different chemicals right now these chemicals are known as inhibitors these inhibitors are particularly methanol ethylene glycol diethylene glycol which are commonly injected into the gas stream to depress the freezing point now once the freezing point depresses 
the gas hydrate which is forming which is tend to form at a particular condition will not form at that condition but will form at the higher pressure and temperature so as you can see in this graph that uh, at 10 percent methanol the hydrate is forming at this point this point this point now as you go on increasing the methanol content once you reaches the 30 percent methanol uh, the gas is no longer forming in the pipeline so this is the stability condition now now about this stability condition this zone is the hydrate forming zone and this zone where you have uh, free zone hydrate free zone so as you can see in this equilibrium graph on the right hand of the side of the equilibrium graph you have hydrate free region and on the left hand side of the hydrate forming uh, you have hydrate forming region so as you can see initially when you have only methane flowing through the gas you have this much area of the pipeline which is susceptible to hydrate formation but now as you have added 30 percent methanol you see that you don't have any chance of hydrate formation so this line if you add methanol to the system will not form the hydrate right now uh, hammer schemed it in 1931 suggested that how much amount of inhibitor which should be needed to remove or prevent the hydrate formation so you can see here below one relationship where wh is the weight of pure inhibitor in liquid water phase which need to be added so that the hydrate will not form right so this mw inh is the molecular weight of inhibitor delta t is the temperature dip pressure that you want and uh, the uh, kh is the hammer schematic constant for inhibitor which is uh, 2335 for methanol and 4000 for ethylene glycol and dg so if you want that how much methanol should be added so you can first find out the water content in the system and along with that you can find out wh and you can add the amount of methanol into the system so that hydrate will not form so depending upon your condition you can add 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent whatever needed for that particular situation one thing to be noted is that methanol is used in majority of the cases but regeneration of methanol or recovering the methanol is difficult therefore these ethylene glycol and diethylene glycol are highly utilized nowadays mm -hmm. so that we can recover them also and we can reuse them also Okay, so this is about preventing hydrate formation. I hope you like this session. Thank you very much.